Hi there, this is Tammy. Welcome back to my channel. This is Tammy's Crafty Life. Um, this video is going to be a little bit different. This is my uh, channel these days is primarily about cross stitch, and today it's cross stitch related. This is what I'm going to call a floss tube extra. I had a conversation with some friends recently about scissor fobs versus zipper pulls. And that prompted me to think that I should do a tutorial. I've made similar things on other tutorials in the past. I'm pretty sure I did a tutorial on how I make just little charm things that I'll show you in a second. But I'm going to start with, so thank you for, for watching. I hope you like what you'll see. If you're new, welcome. And if you're returning, thank you for coming back. I feel like I should have put this onto a lighter board, but it's too late now. This is foam core board that I have put one of these on top of. This is a mat that's for beading. These are what I would consider zipper pulls probably. You could put them on scissors depending. Um, let me grab a pair of decorative scissors. Let's see what I have. There's some scissors. Some scissors. Here's some scissors. So these are very sharp scissors. These are cute. I love these. They come in a pack of three from Amazon. They are tiny. Look how tiny they are. They're hard for me. I have long fingers. Not really fat fingers, but long fingers. And that's the way they work. And then these are from Hobby Lobby. Unicorn scissors. So, uh, Scissor fob is something that you, which I don't think any of these, this will fit on any of these, um, that you would put on to a pair of scissors, partially for decoration and partially to help you find them. Yep, it's not going to fit on any of those. Um, I think I have another one I'll show you in a minute that will. But I wanted to start out by showing you some of these. Um, I use these on my project bags so you can see right here this is on the zipper of my project bag and there's just a tiny little angel on this one hopefully that's focusing and these are ones that I've made in the past just when I was playing around so I'll show them to you up close These two, this was a string of beads I got from Michaels, and I think these beads were on that same string. This is one that I put somebody's name on using alphabet beads. This one has a fun butterfly charm at the bottom. So these are just fun. You could also put these on your keychain. And this is, so this is a zipper pull. Or like I said, a scissor charm if you have small enough scissors. And then I want to show you some others that I've made. Let me find a place to put this. It's out of the way where I don't lose any. <clears throat> I've also made some that are made with peyote beading. These are in the works. So... These two and this one. So this one, um, I found a tutorial by, I think it's called Country Stitchers. I'll see if I can find that video. It's like a year or two ago. And this was the pattern. And then these two patterns I made myself. I don't know what that was. Something just fell. And then this is a completed one. And it's got the dangles on the bottom and see this has a bigger big decorative uh, lobster claw so this could go on these scissors and then you have something that looks like this they totally clash I would not put that orange one on there I don't remember why I made an orange and black one I think because I was making them at this time last year and I thought I might want a Halloween one this has a different lobster claw clasp on it it's still big enough 
for the scissors. And then this one is just a pink and white stripe. And the way that these are made is with a peyote stitch. And I don't know if there's something, a particular kind of peyote stitch, but you chart it on this kind of graph paper. You see how they're all offset a little bit? And if you look at these beads, let's see, maybe this one, whoops. You can probably see that they're offset a little bit. They don't go in a straight line. They go, each one is a little off, kind of like bricks. It's not a brick stitch, though. A brick stitch is done in a different way. So these are some, I've made some of these for friends. Um, and then I also have these kits that I purchased at Acorns and Threads, which is my local needle workshop. And I haven't done any of these yet. These have everything you need, including the thread and the needle. Um, but the directions for these are different than the way I learned how to do this. So I haven't actually done one yet. I wanted to start with the peacock. So one of these days, I'm actually hoping that Acorns and Threads will have a class. They used to have a class, and Fern Ridge Collections, I think, came in and did the class. So I'm hoping they'll have a class on it. So this one I made for me. I need to finish it. And pull that back in there. Set that aside. Straighten this out. Um, so then I want to show beads, how you get the beads. Uh, these are from Michaels, and they come in strings. You can get all kinds of beads at Michaels and Joann's and Hobby Lobby. For this one, this is a mermaid's tail. And if you look at this one, they've already done the work for you of putting them together in a nice way. So you could just take a section off of here and go for it. Um, I'm going to make one using these and these and one of these. So I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can make these. So what do you need to make these? Um, the first one I'm going to make, it's going to use these a palm tree and a starfish and a mermaid tail. And then I'm going to put a little turtle at the bottom of it. Is everything there? Starfish. Where's my star? Oh, I need to cut off a starfish. You know? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. that. I'll need to show you how to do that part, too. Um, I have stuff piled here everywhere. I have a very small working space. So the other thing you need is jump rings. That's what these are. It's many different sizes. And you need tools. So today I'm going to be using um, needle nose pliers. I have two sets of needle nose pliers. Round nose pliers. A crimping tool and wire cutters. So to start with, I'm going to use scissors, excuse me, while I to cut this so I can get one of these off of here. So that's one, one little bead there. And the first thing I'm going to do is get an eye pin That's a head pin. Where are my eye pins? Here's my eye pins. I'm going to get an eye pin. They come in all different lengths. These are three inch lengths and I'll be using one of those in a little bit. But for right now, uh, I dropped one on the floor. I don't need three inches, so I'll take this one. And 
You might notice that all of these have a little hoop on each end to hook them together. This doesn't. This has a hole in the middle. So what I'm going to do is find that hole and I'm going to make this like those. So first I want to take a bead and put on this eye pin. And I'll put this on. And that kind of holds it away a little bit from that. And then I'm going to put another bead on here. And then I want to make this so that it has a hoop on the other end. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my round nose pliers. Those are not round nose. Ah. Round nose pliers. And these, see how these taper? This can determine how big your hoop is. So I'm going to go up a ways because I want a good size hoop. And I'm not right next to the bead. I'm a little bit away from it because I want to be able to wrap this around. So first I'm going to fold this over and fold it and fold it. And then I'm going to move my pliers and I'm going to take, this isn't going to be perfect because I usually do it much closer to myself than I am right now. And I'm pulling with the um, needle nose pliers and I'm wrapping this around. Okay, so I have a, a loop on there, and I'm going to cut this off, I want to cut it close, but, and then I'm going to take this, it's, can you see, I don't know if you can tell, it's kind of bent, I want to straighten it out a little bit. So I'm just going to take my pliers and pull it the way I want it to go. And there we have, I flatten it a little bit more. And there we have, there's a loop on each end. This end is a little bit bigger than that end, but that's okay. We won't notice that when it's all put together. And now I'm going to take, what size do I want this to be? I'm going to use this just for a zipper pull so I can use one of my smaller, I don't need a huge uh, lobster claw. I do have much bigger ones and fun decorative ones. And I'm going to just take, I'm going to use jump rings. I think I'll use this size to put them together. So a jump ring is a ring that has a break in it and it allows you to hook things together. So what I'm going to do is hold on to this. I'm looking for the, where the little break is. I'm going to put this in here and then I'm going to twist sideways to open this. You always want to twist sideways and then you can twist it back. You don't ever want to pull it apart because you won't get it back together. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to start by putting my lobster claw on there and then I think I'm going to put my uh, palm tree at the top. So I'm going to put that on there and then I'm going to grab this and put it back together. And there is the beginning. Now I need another jump ring. Sometimes the jump rings like to jump. That's a good name for them because for me they jump all over the place. Now I'm going to put this. I want these both to face the same way. So I need to be careful how I put it in the jump ring. I usually end up putting things in there backwards. So I'm going to put this on like this. So the back is going on first. And then I'm going to put the front on first with the other one, and then they should face the same way. I did that right. And they are both facing the same way. I feel fumble-fingered today. Yes, they're facing the same way. 
Now I'm going to put on the mermaid's tail. Is that what I want? No, I'm going to put the... What's it called? The starfish. I'm going to put that on next. I'm going to find where my... Looking for the break. And sometimes it's hard to see. There it is. So, put this on. Back first. Front first. So they're facing each other. I could have done it the opposite. This kind is quick and easy because you're just using jump rings. You don't have to build anything. So back first, front first. And sometimes your junk, jump ring can get a little wonky. And then I just take it on the where it meets and squeeze it together. So this is what we have so far. And the last thing I'm going to put on there is this tiny little turtle. If I can find the break. Is that the break? That's the break. So, back first, front first. And that's it. This one is done. This is very fun. This could go on a, um, I can get it to all lay right. This could go on a bag. It has some kind of a sea theme. Oh, it's backwards. Um, it could go on your key ring. It could go on your scissors if you put on a bigger lobster claw. So that is my first one first uh, way that I want to show you. Get that out of the way. Now with this one, I thought these beads were fun. So this one's going to be a lot more simple. I'm going to use one of these guys and I'm going to use this one that says heart my dog or love my dog. So for this one I'm going to use a my mind just went blank. I'm going to use an eye pin. Sorry. I'm tired. It's been a bit of a long day. And I think I want a three inch one. So I'm going to take one of these. I want to be sure it's long enough. And I already had one. Oh, here it is. I already had one out. So I'm going to put a bead on here. And I'm going to put this on. I'll put another bead on here. Um, I think I might. Let me see. I don't really have anything else I want to stick on there. I'm going to look in here and see. None of those really go with it. So I'm just going to leave it like that. I have a bunch of other beads somewhere else, but I didn't get them all out because I don't have enough space to get them all out at the same time. So I'm ready to wrap this. I could use a much shorter eye pin than that. That's a waste of a long eye pin. So I'll do this. 
and this and this. So that's much shorter. I'm hoping you can see all of this. And then again, I'm going to wrap. Oops, sorry. Bend that farther. This one is stronger. It's a different kind of metal. And then I can hopefully cut off the end of that and bend this so it's the way I want it. And I think I want to maybe add this to my key ring. So I'm going to use one of these. Just because I think it'd be fun to add to my key ring. So I'm going to go a little bit bigger just for strength purposes. Put this on here. This on here. And then I'm going to put the I love my dog down at the bottom. This one doesn't matter which way it goes. Because the butt the bead, the paw print bead is the same both directions. So there we go. This is just a fun thing that I'm going to put on my key ring. Or this could go on scissors. Because I used a bigger lobster claw. I would, um, so there's multiple reasons to put these on your scissors. They are for decoration, they're for helping to find your scissors easier. I used to have a pattern that was a hard anger pattern and the scissor fob, if you want to call it that, was a chatelaine and what that was was a long, like a 36 inch piece of needlework. It was hard anger, so it, it had hard anger done all the way around and it went around your neck and laid down on your chest and the scissors were attached to the bottom. So you always had the scissors ready. and. I thought that was pretty cool. I was looked for that pattern today and I could not find it, so I don't know what I did with it. Um, let's see. I had another way I was going to show you. Um, So you can buy beads like this, or you can buy beads like this. This is from Jesse James Beads. I think they might have their own website. Um, I think also you can get these on Potomac and some other websites. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna dump some of these out and see what I want to do to do this one that's strung. So I want to use one of these big purple beads, and then there's some fun little um, decorative beads. I want some of those. So I lay them out the way I think I want them. I like things symmetrical. So I'm going to do them like that. I think I'm going to put one of those in between each of those. Put that on each end. what I want. Hmm. 
<laughs> I'm thinking I might want those in there. what I think. I think I'll do it like that. And this one's going to be done with beading wire. And this is the kind of beading wire that I use. It's, use. it's called Soft Flex. And to do that I need crimping beads. I thought I already had some out, but I don't think that I do. I use crimp tubes. And I'm going to need a dangle on the bottom. I'm going to dangle that angel from the bottom. These are just different, um, I called them dangles, so you can call them charms. These also will work for zipper pulls just by, well this one already has a lobster claw on it. and. But the others don't so these are made with the eye pin the same way I did this guy some of them are made with a head pin and they just make a nice nice little addition to things so I'm gonna put that on the end I'm gonna start that is probably long enough so I need one of these guys this is a crimp tube I only need one. This is going to be really hard to see because this is really tiny. I'm sure you can barely see that. So I'm going to put this on here. Yeah, I can't see to get it on there. I'll do it this way. Put that on there. And then I'm going to put my angel on there. This angel was made, uh, the beads came on a string like this, and so I just took it apart and made it angels with it. Ugh, I can't see to get that on there. And then I'm going to run the end back through the crimp bead. And pull it down fairly tight. And then these are crimping pliers. And they have two different grooves. One is to crimp it flat so you can see that I don't know if you can see that it made it flat and then the other one folds it in half and then this is on there strong it's not going anywhere so now I'm going to string my beads the way I had them laid out. I can see the hole. Where's the hole? Where's the hole? This is my first time filming on a new cell phone, so I'm hoping it works okay. Going to be a bummer if it doesn't. Oh, got to get that through that hole on the other side. But that is not the right hole. That's the right hole. Okay, that was a pain. Okay, where's the hole in this one? 
It's late enough in the day that my eyes are not cooperating with me. Really? Where is the hole? It's gotta be right there. And like that. So that's what that looks like. And then I'm going to use, I think I'm going to go decorative this time. I'm going to use one of these heart ones because I think these are really pretty. And I need another crimp bead. Crimp tube. Where did I put them? There they are. Okay, so now I want to put the, I'm going to use one of these beads too for an ending bead. This is just a clear bead that was with the um, starfish. Sorry, I'm having trouble finding my words today. My back is really hurting and angle up. I need, I usually have an angle where this is right in front of me and I cannot do that this way. So put this, so I put the crimp bead on. I'm putting my lobster claw clasp through there. I'm running the wire through there and there. I want to run it through several. Let's see. Okay. So it came out, I'm having it come out at the bottom of this pink bead, and I'm going to take my pliers and pull, and that pulls it down tight. Now I can do my crimping. And then I'm going to cut this off as close as I can. It is not cooperating with me. There. So there is that one. Oh, this escaped. The little end escaped at the other end, and I'm just going to go cut it off. So let me... So there's that one. And there is that one. Is that all I did? No. And there is this one. These two both could be zipper pulls, not zipper pulls. These two both could be scissor fobs. This one could be if you have some scissors that are very tiny. Um, they can go on your keychain. They can be a zipper pull. Um, you can do whatever you like with them. For a while I was really obsessed with what people call chunky charms. And I had a bunch of people who gave them to me. Let me show you. They were coming to me in the mail for my birthday one year. So this is one that somebody made me. This is a very chunky, chunky charm. And this one I paid somebody to make for me. This is huge. It's very heavy. It's got a butterfly on the end. I said I like purple and silver and butterflies. And so she made this for me. Her name is Trina. This could be a keychain. It's got a key thing on it, but it is very heavy, so I would not use it for a keychain. And you can see her lobster claw is huge. So it's just a fun thing to do. I have that one hanging by my desk. Um, I don't think I have anything else here to show you. I think that's it. Um, if you have any questions about how it's done, please 
leave those in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it helped you. Um, I haven't done a tutorial video for quite some time, so I felt like I was kind of discombobulated today. But, um, and I wish I still had that pattern for the heart anger one. It was so pretty. And I don't know why I don't have it anymore. But anyway, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw and that you'll come back. I think next weekend I might do a partial whip parade video. Um, I have a lot of whips, uh, which are works in progress. I think I have like 60 of them. And I want to do, I want to go through them all and see how many I might not want to do that I might want to do to make them unfinished objects. So I figured like that would be a good way to do it. So we'll see um, how my weekend goes next weekend. I have, yeah, that's my plan for right now is to do a partial, at least a partial whip parade. And then the following week I'll probably do my regular floss tube video that shows my cross stitch projects that I'm working on or have finished. I will have some fun finishes for you. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and happy crafting. Bye for now.